Hey everybody, this is Quasi Mojo here with you on Metal Holic Radio, and we are back. The man himself has made it, the metal man, Brian Head Welch of Love and Death, and of course, Corn. How you doing, man? Good to you. I'm doing absolutely wonderful. Uh, I'm so excited both for you. We've got the new album out from your, from your new band, Love and Death. You're going to spend some time this uh, summer with the, with the old guys and in, in Corn. It's it's a great and exciting thing for fans of uh, of of yourself. So, why'd you call us old? Well, <laughs> hey, we still got it. Yeah. Metal in them, right? <laughs> hey, you're still younger than me too, so you know. <laughs> I all should, right, all right. I, I should say I'll the bro- the brotherhood of corn. How's that? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, yeah, you've got a lot on your plate right now, and I want to talk about all of that. But let's start with love and death and the new album between here and lost. Does that work for you? Yeah, we put the, yeah man. The the album came out on January twentieth, around twenty first or something like that. Right. And it's, it's doing well, and we just toured a month with Thousand Foot Crutch and. Great tour, great turnout, great response, a lot of energy. It just feels like a totally new, a new uh, thing going on for us. We're happy. And they're a great, great band, too, so that that's awesome to, you know. Unfortunately, you didn't come through my neck of the woods, so I didn't get to see you guys, but maybe sometime during the year when you're out on tour, you'll, you'll hit where I'm at. But um, everyone knows who you are, of course, but tell us about the other members of Love and Death and how you chose those specific pieces to put the band together. Yeah, they, um, well, I actually, when I left Corner, started my solo project, and I, I, uh, found some, some guy, I had, I held YouTube auditions, and I found a couple guys there, and, um, and then our, the guitar player, I found him a couple of years ago on Facebook. He was actually trying out for Tower of Congrats, but they ended up keeping their guitar player, so he's been with us for two years, and yeah, it's just been a great, it's a great lineup, and, we're just going to stick this out and see where it goes. Awesome. And Love and Death, to me, listening to it, it seems like a vehicle for personal catharsis for you. You're stepping out in front of the mic. You're now the focus. How do you feel about this personal growth of yours and the opportunity to do this? Uh, it feels really good, man. It's like, you know, I, I, I kind of battled with the whole going in the front thing, you know, and being the front guy. You know, it's like something I wanted to do, but when I did it, it was like, it seemed like it was, it was something that uh, just wasn't, it was a lot of work, you know, and there's a lot of more stress and everything involved. So I just kept doing it. I kept going, you know, I wanted to quit and just do other things a few times, but something would happen. It would encourage me to keep going. And so, but now I'm finally comfortable in the place I'm at. Um, so yeah, it's like, it took a while, but yeah, I'm, I'm really comfortable with, with being, you know, the, the fun guy for it, so it's fun. Nice. And between here and Lost, the album, it, it it almost to me seems like a sonic companion to your books. Am I way off base there? Um, I think the first record is is more of a companion to the, especially my first book. But this is more like of a a group effort with all the band members. But I can see where you're saying that. I can see where where that's coming from because a lot of the uh, you know the lyrics are are you know, about some of the stuff that, you know, I went through and, and so I could see how you can put that comparison together. Well, just the album title alone between here and lost almost seems like the story, right? By just by itself. So totally, totally. Yeah. My bass player came with that name. I was like, I love that name. You know, it just, it just was deep and I could relate to it. And I think a lot of people can. Well, and there's some incredible stuff on this record. A lot more melody than I think most of your fans might have expected. Yeah, man, that's exactly what uh, we're going for. I just wanted to do... Uh, I'm a very, very melodic person. I've done a lot of the dark stuff for years, and I really love that, and you can hear a lot of that on this record, but I think I, we've definitely touched m- more melody than I've ever touched before than I've ever done in my life, so... It's, uh, it's it's really everything I love about music. It's really melodic, and it's got the the, uh, the energy to you and just the intensity. I, and, I mean, as I was saying, there's a lot of it. Every song on the album is an original, for those of you who don't have it yet, except the second track you picked, Devo's Whip It. It seems like an unusual choice for a cover, and you took it to a whole new place. How and why did you choose that track? Uh, it's just for fun. That was it. But, you know, I was trying to come up with a, a new wave cover song to do 
And that band was like the weirdest new wave band out of the 80s. So right. I was like, it would be cool to just do the weirdest band, you know? So um, I didn't think we'd be able to do it, though, just because of how weird the song was. But I just, I don't know, it just came out. And everybody laughed at me, too, when I said I wanted to do it. Like the guys in the band and the producer. And then when I brought the idea to them, they were like, wow, this is this could actually work. And it does. It does. It works quite well. You also had Maddie Montgomery from For Today on one of the tracks, I Wait For You. How did that come about? Um, that was pretty cool. I was at I was at my house, or sorry, I was at my parents' house in Bakersfield, California, visiting for, I think it was uh, Thanksgiving. And I heard, um, I heard this idea, because I had my songs, and I was trying to write vocals for some of the songs, and I had this uh, vocal idea for a screaming part. And I was like, oh, cool, cool. I'm just going to have this song probably be a screaming song. And then and then I got a text from Maddie as I was writing it. And he's like, hey, man, I just want to throw this out there. If you need any screaming vocals on any of your stuff, let me know. And I was like, whoa, it's funny you asked me that right this second. Because I just, I'm actually writing this heavy part. So I go, that must be a sign or something. Because, so yeah, I sent him the tracks and then he laid down the vocals. He actually finished those vocals about eight or ten months before the record was done so we just kind of hung on to them <laughs> ah, the, yeah. the fun of modern technology there's so much you can do now that you couldn't do back when i first got into music but now i i know you love all the songs on the album obviously but are there one or two songs on the album that perhaps speak more loudly to you personally than the others yeah yeah those standouts to me is like uh meltdown mm-hmm. and um Oh, I'll start with Meltdown. Meltdown is just, you know, ever since I stopped farting and started stopped medicating and everything with all the stuff that I did, you know, I've, I've had to battle face head on my emotions and my negative emotions and my anger and rage and stuff. And so throughout the years, the last eight years or so, I've really had a few meltdowns. But in, in order to find that place of peace, I think that stuff needs to come out of you. Mm-hmm. But you can find that. Man, I finally got that place of peace where I, really content with life and uh so that song it's called meltdown and it's about having a meltdown but it, it makes me really think positive about the place where i'm at now and then another song is by the way it's uh it's about losing loved ones you know and just dealing with grief grief and all that and i had a couple of friends pass away last summer and uh and so i just was thinking about them and thinking about other people who are grieving you know so those two stand out i think now, this year, as we already mentioned, you're going to be reconnecting with your corn brethren, some festival dates later this year, which may or may not find you back on a permanent basis. Time will tell. What can you tell us about that? Uh, I imagine there's got to be both excitement, a little apprehension, on both on some level. Yeah, it's, it's mainly all excitement, just because uh, everyone seems to be in a good place, and everyone's just positive, and, you know, it finally found, like, everybody found themselves, I think, you know, and it's like, it's really cool to see that just as friends. And so, yeah, we're just going to see how it goes and, and see where it ends up. And and um, maybe we'll do a lot more stuff, you know. We'll, time will tell, just like you said. Yeah. Well, and everybody sort of stepped away from Corn as well and did a little bit of their own stuff. You know, Fieldy has his project going. Ray's been involved in so many things. Matter of fact, you had an opportunity to play with Ray not long ago with uh, George Lynch, Billy Sheehan. Uh, what was that like? Oh, it was incredible because George Lynch was my hero when I was a kid and just to jam up there and to have them playing like, because they were just shredding up there doing all this crazy, awesome stuff. And I get up and up line with them and it's like, it's three chords. That was the <laughs> part that we did. And so, and, uh, so it was funny to see them like kind of come down to uh, the second level like that. But it was just surreal for me and it was like kind of a dream come true, you know. It was a dream come true just to play with a guy that was my hero, man. So it's just like, you know, life. I'm, I'm definitely a blessed guy. Right. And Billy too. He's almost like a lead guitar player on that bass. I, I, the the thing that made me think of it was I actually just talked to Billy yesterday. So, but uh, oh, did you? Oh, wow. Yeah, it's yeah, funny. I, I got to the end of the entire interview and hung up and realized it's his birthday and I totally forgot to say something. Ah, so. oh, you should have called him back. Yeah. <laughs> But, but yeah, um, yeah, he's a, dude, he's a legend. Those guys are legends. So it just it was an honor to be up there. Well, I had to be cool to have Ray behind you again there too. So you know, but uh, totally, totally. Ray's just I guess they call him octopus because he's just like 
his arms are everywhere all the time. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, you're still going to do Love and Death, even if you return to Corn on a full-time permanent basis. You had planned to tour significantly with Love and Death this year. How will that work out now with you also doing the Corn dates? Um, well, Corn, part of the deal was, like I told him, I was like, you know, maybe it is the right time. And I said, I said we have a just sign contracts with my love and death and you know I really love to do it so if we can work stuff out to where we can do some dates with corn like a lot of dates with corn like Philly did last year or mm-hmm. in 2010 then you know I can do it but otherwise it'll have to be another time or something and and so they were just totally cool like all positive about it they're like yeah man we did it for Philly you, you can do it for you guys too and you know and so it just kind of worked out and we're just going to we're going to see how much how much to do, you know, how it plays out and everything. Nice. And then on top of all that, if you didn't already have so much going on, you're going to be writing a monthly column for Loudwire this year. How'd that come about? Yeah, dude, that's really cool. Um, they just uh, I went to the Loudwire studios during the tour a few weeks ago and just talked to them, and they actually offered it to me, and I was like, wow, it's really cool. It's a front, you know rock and roll side, you know, the thing, because one of them, they're in total honor that they asked me. They've never done it before, and they thought that I was a good fit. So, yeah, I look forward to it. I'm kind of nervous about it because, you know, i gotta got to deliver, you know. So right. I'm like, so I hope I get some good stuff. <laughs> I want it to be good, so. Well, unearth a, different, unearth a different side of your creativity. Exactly, so, and uh, I think it'll. You know, everything seems to fall into place, so I'm hoping like every article I get like, it falls into place. Well, a couple more questions before we get out of here. Uh, I work in a prison by day. We all have to have day jobs these days, it seems, and we handle treatment programs for drug, alcohol addiction, anger issues. As someone who's been down that dark pathway and is now on that daily journey of recovery, is there some personal truth you've discovered that you feel might be universally relevant to others who are battling their own demons? Yeah, um, I mean, there's a lot, I think, but like a big thing that I've learned is forgiveness. And it's because a lot of the people that are abusing drugs and just messing up their lives with that stuff, it comes from hurt, when from, from some... Uh, some kind of trauma, you know, when we're a kid or something. Right. Or an absent parent or something like that. And a lot of it is just like forgiving the people like in your heart, like totally just, you know, people that are hurting hurt people. Like no one that's truly happy is around hurting people. So we have, we have to, it's like let go of what that person owes you to forgive them. Either either that or you're going to hold on to bitterness and it's going to eat you up and you're going to turn to the drugs and everything. So, right. Forgiveness, forgiving others, forgiving yourself for all the damage you've done to uh, to yourself and others, you know. But it's just to break that cycle, I think forgiveness is really important. Excellent answer. So very true, too. And to end on a light note, totally random and pointless question of the day. If you could star on any television series, what would it be? <laughs> oh, I'm so not good on the spot when you guys come over that. Okay. <laughs> Any television show? Any the television. Simpsons. The Simpsons. And would you play yourself or another character? Could I, like, jump? Could I be, like, those characters and totally sound like them, look like them and everything? Why not? Then I would, it would be it would Homer Simpson, <laughs> for sure. He is, like, the best messed up cartoon character ever. And if not, I'd just like to follow him down for, like, the whole season. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Head Welch of Love and Death and of course Corn. thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us a little bit. Let us know what's going on with the new album and everything going on in your world. And of course everybody out there, you can keep up with what's going on with his new Loudwire column. When does the first one come out? Um, it just came out last, this Monday. It just passed. It was just like an introduction to it. Right. So um, the next one is going to be I turned them in like the 10th of every month. So, uh, a little bit after that. Nice, nice. And of course, the new album from Love and Death, Between Here and Lost, get out, get a copy, legally buy it, don't download it. Thank Mind. you so much, man. Oh, absolutely. Brian, again, thanks so much for taking the time. I'll let you get to it. I know it's late where you are, and we look forward to seeing you on the road, man. Yeah, thank you, man. And that's cool what you do in, in the prisons and, and, and working with those people, you know, to deal with their issues. So that's awesome. 
and uh, we'll see you after somewhere. Thanks, bro. Absolutely. Take care.